Today we are making the accessories for this beautiful Outlander inspired Annalise outfit that I'm making. So that's going to be the sleeve floofs, the blue neck scrunchy tie, and the purple tricorn hat that matches the color of her petticoat. So starting off with the tricorn hat, you can see that it's kind of this like little mini tricorn hat that's just perched on the top front of her head. And it looks like it's made out of the same silk fabric that her skirt is made out of. Initially, I thought that it was like some sort of felt that was dyed to be the same color, but you can see that the edges of it are actually bias bound. So that kind of makes me believe that it is actually made out of fabric. You can also see that there is a seam between the dome of the hat and the brim and that's another clue that this was probably originally made out of fabric. Um, this hat also has some really cute details on it like this pink cockade and mauve ostrich feather combo and then the little bar of trim with a couple of little round rhinestone buttons that actually match the rhinestone buttons from the jacket. The tricorn hat is composed of two parts. First is the little like circular top of the hat where your head would go into. And then second is the bigger circular brim that gets folded up in three areas to form the tricorn. For the crown or dome of the hat, I found these little mini straw hats that are intended for dolls like about the size of an American Girl doll. And I took that and cut the brim off of it and then sort of messed around with it and smooshed it until it became a little bit flatter because I wanted the profile of the dome to be a bit shallower. Then I cut out a larger circle out of paper to be the brim and I just sort of uh, freehanded it. You can see my little uh, pie measurements there. Really what I should have done is found a plate or something that was about the size that I wanted and traced that because this ended up not being exactly perfectly circular. And so when I went to fold the three corners up, it made it a bit uneven. I wasn't sure when I started this whether I was going to make the interior of the hat actually able to kind of sit inside of your head. And so I cut out that interior circle, leaving me with just the piece for the brim. I traced that template onto a piece of leftover muslin that I had, and I also traced it onto a couple pieces of medium weight interfacing to stiffen the brim. So now I have my interface stiffened piece for the brim of the hat and the dome of the hat will get placed right in the center on top of that. And I'm just laying this piece of muslin flat and kind of like pulling it as tight as I can to eliminate any, any wrinkles, but there will be some wrinkles that appear um, because I didn't want to add seams to this. I wanted there to be no seams in the dome. So that means that you're gonna end up with like some small amount of like wrinkles and bunching just to get it to go around the edge of the hat. And I'm using my needle and just stitching um, directly into the straw. To give the brim of the hat a little bit more structure and make sure that when I make the tricorn folds, it actually folds on a nice clean line, I decided to add some boning to it and I'm just using some extra zip ties that I had left over from doing corset mock-ups. After stitching the zip ties in place, I also decided that the edges needed a little reinforcement. So I took a wire from a picture hanging kit and wrapped that around the outside. It was super flexible and so allowed me to bend it perfectly around my circle and helps uh, hold in shape the fold as well. Next, I took two pieces of my silk fabric and added some fusible interfacing to that as well. And then I sandwiched the interior structure that I made between those two pieces of silk. To attach all three pieces together, I needed to make some bias binding. So I cut two inch strips on the bias of that same silk fabric. Then I used my iron to fold that strip in half and then folding the edges in towards the center to meet at that sort of middle line. If you've ever used bias binding before, you know what this looks like. Then I attached this bias binding all the way around the exterior of the hat via the usual method. Then I covered the dome of the hat in the silk fabric the same way that I had done with the muslin. 
And with that done, I stitch it down to the center of the brim, making sure to keep the least wrinkly ends of the dome um, towards the tricorn points, if you will. So that way, the stuff that's most visible will be the smoothest. The hat is trimmed with a pink cockade that matches the fabric of the jacket for this outfit. So I'm using the instructions that I found on an American Duchess blog and basically using my tailor's ham to pin into and just kind of taking a strip of that fabric and folding it on itself and pinning it down in place. Um, then going back and sort of on the, the underside of the cockade, stitching along the edge to hold it in place. And usually cockades are completely round, but I decided to make a half cockade so that it would fit in the brim of the hat better. The cockade also has some white lace detailing in front of the pink, so I'm taking some extra lace that I had, cutting it to size, and basically repeating the same uh, folding, fanning process on top of the pink. Next, I layered the cockade along with some sort of mauve colored ostrich feathers on the hat and stitched it into place. The hat also has this cute little detail of a bar of this silver trim um, coupled with a couple of round rhinestone buttons. So I'm just arranging those where I think they should be on the edge of the hat here and then I will stitch those down into place. You can also see here that I've added a headband to the bottom of the hat, which apparently I forgot to get footage of, but I basically just got a plastic headband off um, of Amazon, and it's the kind that has this like split in the center because I thought that would be a little bit more sturdy and sort of keep the hat from wobbling on it, and I just attached it by stitching over and under the headband piece. And there it is, all finished. I think it turned out so, so cute, and I'm really excited to wear it. The next accessory I have to make for this project is the blue ruched necktie. And thankfully, it's about the same color as the silk petticoat that I made for my Chocolate Girl project, and I happen to have a little bit of that fabric left over. I basically took all the leftover fabric that I had and cut two inch wide strips in it and hoped and prayed that it was gonna be long enough once it was ruched to go around my neck. After that, the process was pretty simple. I just did a loose running stitch down the center of each strip of fabric and then pulled that to tighten the gathers. Then to keep the gathers from kind of twirling around on that central piece of thread, I went back and did a small back stitch all the way down the center as well. Now on to the final accessory, the sleeve floofs. So I just made a pattern myself of what I thought a sleeve floof should look like. Um, and it was just kind of this like cone-ish cylindrical shape. Um, and I was using some leftover linen that I had, so I ended up needing to kind of put multiple seams in it uh, on each side. If you are making this at home and you have enough fabric, I would say it will definitely look better if you only have a seam on one side because then you can place that seam sort of like towards the back or the inside of your arm. At this point, I was tired of all the hand stitching, so I did a regular French seam using my machine up both sides. I wanted the edges to remain looking really tiny and delicate, so I used a rolled hem to finish them off. And this was my first time doing a rolled hem, and I would say it definitely took a bit of practice to get the hang of. Um, it was hard to kind of like make the fabric want to roll on itself. One tip that I would give is start off by doing like the tiniest, tiniest little fold of the fabric in the direction that you want it to roll, release that, and then go back and roll the fabric between your fingers. When I did that, it seemed to be much more cooperative and, and work better. So then once you have the roll, you just take and do a little whip stitch along the edge of the roll to secure it. So I don't remember if I filmed this uh, on the last sleeve, but this is the little like sleeve ruffle um, that will go underneath. And I do not have like casing to 
put the elastic in this is basically like my workaround for that so i just have elastic running through here and i've like folded over the sleeve on itself and i'm doing a back stitch there and look at that elastic casing so here is my little sleeve flounce thing it looks much better when it's on uh, than it does now and this is like the cuff and then this is the top part and initially i was going to sew this into the sleeve but then i thought well if i if i do that then this is the only garment that i can wear it with but if i put elastic up here then i can wear it with lots of different stuff um so i already have the elastic here not historically accurate so i may as well just you know add elastic to the top and make it more flexible here is a little sneak peek of the sleeve floof in action under the main sleeve of the jacket. But if you want to see how all of these accessories came together and really helped the Annalise Outlander outfit come to life, then check out the video on the making of the jacket, which I will post tomorrow.